Welcome back. This is Adventures with Dr. Joe. We've got this beautiful spreader. It's made in Italy. When I bought my mountain cabin, this came with it, but it had been used for fertilizer and it was impossibly frozen and rusted shut. I got it to work. I heated it. I torched it. I lubricated it. I creep oiled it. You can't imagine. I beat on it, but I finally got it to work. Look at that. So that determines the flow rate. There's actually another bar in here that goes that determines the center or left or right spray pattern, but I just keep it locked in the center. But this needs to be adjusted. Turn it off, turn it on, adjust this, the uh, volume, this, the amount you want to do for fertilizer, lime, seeds, other things. But when I'm inside my tractor, I've got a Kubota L6060, I cannot reach this. So I needed to do something that could activate or actuate this lever, and I think I've got the answer. So what I wanted to do was measure the excursion of this. It's about a foot. And I thought if I could get a linear actuator to connect to this, I could control it from inside the cab, so I bought one. This is a linear actuator. It has a motor and a drive, and it sends this bar out and back. This one has an excursion of 10 inches. Not quite a foot like this, but it's gonna probably work out. And then I have to figure out where to put this to make this work. Let's look at some options. So my first thought was, I'll just put it here. I'll drill a hole in this, hook it to this. I'll connect this up here somewhere, but no, nah, it didn't work because I absolutely need it here, which is the closed position. So I'd have to do some welding, mount something up here. And I thought, well, maybe there's another way to do this. Look, if I can somehow mount this, to this post, I could mount this to that pin, mount this, and because right here it's fully closed, and then I could open it up, close it again. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to take this apart. And I can take this hitch, this pin off, and we'll take the arm off. There that is. And then we'll take the pin off this other and there, there's the connecting arm. And now we've just got this that we've got to worry about. So we can see the, the connection to make this gate open and close. And that's what we're going to connect to our actuator. Okay, so now you can see I've got the actuator connected to it in the fully closed position. And now I'm going to try to hook it up to the body of this. So in this position, it's fully closed. So I need to mount this probably to this main bar. And I've got a steel strap we're going to modify so it'll, it'll fit this. So what I need is to take a, a piece of bar stock that I can connect here and turn this piece 90 degrees so bend it like this and we're going to take it over to the vise and bend it so it can fit on here flush and fit into the hole in the actuator flush okay so i measured the exact length i needed and i pushed hard on this and i bent it so now it's at 90 degrees okay so i bent my stock i've made it so that it can fit There I've got the pin in. Then I kind of figured out where I could mount this and make it nice. So then I drilled and tapped a hole right here and I'm going to cut this bar off here and smooth it off. 
First thing we want to do is tension the blade up, which I've done. Got it in the green zone. We're going to turn it on and put a little coolant on the blade and make our cut. There it is. Okay, we'll just smooth this out at the grinder. Take off the sharp edge. Pin in here. Wow, oh, there it is. So now I'm going to secure this bolt, make it make it nice and strong, make it tight, and we'll see if this works. So there it's going out, and here it's coming back in. So that's fully open. And this is closing. That's it. So there it is, fully closed. Okay, to make this more rigorous, I'm going to put a second bolt in here. Probably right about there. Spring loaded pin punch. made a nice little teeny prick in that which we'll then take to the drill press. So I'm going to first pre-drill a small hole. Be sure you secure these better than I did. Okay, I've replaced the the bar, I've run the linear actuator through its paces, and this will be its best orientation, so I'm going to pull right here. And then we're going to drill our hole at this angle to tap. Best size for a quarter inch by 28 is probably a number 7 bit, but I don't have that. So we're going to use a 730 seconds, which is very close. Okay, great, now we'll tap it. This is a quarter by 28 tap. We'll just carefully start to drive it home here. It's cutting the threads and I can feel it. And if it gets too tight, you back it up. But it's going through easily. So I just gently started it. So we've got two bolts holding this in, which I think is going to be good. All right, we'll, we'll reconnect this. Let's run it through its paces again and see how it goes. Fully closed. So that's a good solid fix. So now it's just time to hook it up to the tractor and do the wiring. Okay, I've got the spreader now mounted onto my tractor. And these are the wires that come out of the actuator. And what I want to do is I want to hook it up to one of these connectors. These are what we're using to connect the wires. When the wires are in here, the central part is soldered that will melt and solder the wires together. And these ends are shrink wraps that will make it a watertight seal. Let the wires overlap in the center. And then when we heat it, you can see it shrinking, good shrink wrap, and then the solder melts. And that's a beautiful seal. Okay, here's that shrink wrap. So we got it covered up because this is going to be on the outside world. The rated current of the linear actuator is 3 amps so we're going to use these 5 amp fuses and our fuse jumper that's going to go into the fuse box here 
these will be the fuses that it replaces basically one for the switch and one for this extra wire that we're going to use to power the linear actuator so this one we're going to do a crimp and a shrink wrap get the right color with the crimper shrink wrap around it. So the location of this switch is going to be close enough that I can directly wire this to the the connection up for the fuse box. And then right in the middle we'll get that <coughs> solder ring to melt. So now we're going to hook up our ground, and I was able to get this wire, oh nice, into the smaller connector, and now the wire from, I just hooked a, a piece of black wire with a connector here, we're going to hook it to the frame, which serves as a ground. Great. Okay, so I've got <clears throat> a length of two-stranded wire going to strip the ends. We're going to connect those to the two blue lines, which is going to power the actuator. And at the end of this line, we're going to hook up this quick connect to allow us to just quick connect to it. And it's got a nice cover, so it'll stay protected while it's not in use. So I identified the side of this switch. This is a switch that's made 20 win by 30 millimeters and should a nice tech a nice tight fit exactly where I'd like this in the sensor we're going to cut the corner we're going to cut on the edge of this make a hole using this oscillating multi-tool So I tested the connection to be sure that when I push the switch up, it's going down and down, it's closing at the first connection. Now I'm going to cover that with a shrink wrap to give us a nice seal, nice waterproof seal. This is our quick connect, which has covers on it, so, they, so the connections will stay without wasps, mud daubers, things like that. Okay, we're going to fire up the tractor and open up the linear actuator and open up the open up the spreader. Here we go. So I got my finger on the button and it should be opening right now. Let's take a look. And yes, you can see it opened. And when we look inside, we can see the gates open like that. Now from inside the tractor, I'll try to close it by pushing the button down, and it should be closing. I can't see it directly, but I'm filming it, so it should be good. It's slow, which is nice because it can be incrementally adjusted. Yep, there it is all the way closed, so fantastic. The linear actuator's in place, wired up. It works great. Something to think about when you've got an enclosed cab and can't get to your control. Thank you very much for watching again Adventures with Dr. Joe. Please consider subscribing and liking. This was the installation of a remote controlled linear actuator which is going to allow me to open and close the gates and control the feed rate of my spreader from inside my cab. Again, thank you so much for watching.